The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. Welcome back to the Short Time Wrestling Podcast. Division One and college wrestling season as a whole has come to a completion and a big sigh of relief for a lot of wrestlers, a big sigh of success for some others. One of those people we're going to have today, Kyle Cannell, All-American, finishing third at 197 pounds. My name is Jason Bryant. We're talking news, reviews, previews, and interviews, but right now talking. Mr. Cannell, welcome to the program, man. I'm good, man. I'll tell you what. You had pretty much most of Quicken Loans Arena, save those wearing scarlet and gray, uh, rooting for you <laughs> throughout the course because of uh, what you, you go out there and you, you have a great tournament. You finish third. But before we get into the nuts and bolts of the actual tournament itself, what's 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 it been like for you the last you know 48 hours since coming off the mat in Cleveland going, man, I'm not just an All-American. I, I was third. I was unseated. I mean, what's it? What's the experience been like for the last, you know, the last couple of days? Uh, it's it's been wild. Uh, I'm getting hundreds and hundreds of messages from people and I'm trying to keep up with them and all that. But it's going to take some time before it starts slowing down. So I'm. I, it's, it feels amazing and it feels great that I can inspire so many, so many people. So I want to know what <laughs> get your Twitter back meant because I'm looking through your timeline. Is like, did did somebody did you lose the password? I mean, what happened with the Twitter thing? So it, it somebody must have gotten into my somebody got into my email and they changed my uh my Twitter email and my phone number and um they they changed my Twitter password got in my account and they started as soon as I think it was as soon as I beat Colin uh, they started tweeting about Bitcoin or something and people are texting me like you just beat Colin Moore and you're tweeting about Bitcoin I'm like what are you talking about and I'm like I'm, <laughs> I look at my Twitter I try to get on it and I was like, Oh, your password's been changed. And I'm like, what? No, I didn't change my password. So, uh, I took, it was a little bit of a, a struggle to get it back. And, and I had to email the support multiple times and had other people email them. And finally they, uh, they reverted my email and I changed my email password. So it was a little frustrating at first because like, while all this stuff was going on, all I could do is just like see what people were saying about me and I couldn't really respond as myself. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I'm guessing to see Bitcoin wrestling. Who would be your number one suspect? Dylan Palacio. Did you have anything to do with this? <laughs> that's that's what that's what somebody made a joke there. Like, yeah, it's probably probably Dylan Palacio doing that because because he's such such a big he's such a big uh, crypto guy. <laughs> oh, so t- talking around, I was going back looking through some things, and and one thing that really jumped out about me wasn't necessarily the success because you know uh being an old dominion graduate i pay attention to a lot of things that are going into the mac and of course division one wrestling as a whole but it wasn't necessarily the performance but it was the performance compared to some of the results you'd had this season like let's just look at the win over preston weigel who a month before had teched you in the first period what the (laughs) heck man let's let's just talk about the the jump from a month ago even the mac tournament you lost to a guy from ohio who was under 500 And, and just to get into the tournament you had to win a true second match so Let's talk about that last month of the season. What's that? What was that like? Um, well, in the MAC tournament, it was it was actually really. Uh, after I lost that first match, it was really deflating. I was beating him pretty, pretty uh, by by a few points, and then he just came back and took me down a few times, and then I just kind of broke down. And and I was like, at that moment, I I I got and got down on myself for a second. I was like, man, this nationals is in Cleveland, and and I wanted to really wanted to go there, and. And I, now I got to battle back for 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 second, and, but my uh, my coaches had me keep my head up, and and I just kept kept fighting and wrestling through, and and finished the tournament, and uh, finished strong. Ended up getting getting an automatic bid, so I was I was extremely happy about that. Um, just uh, uh, it, it, just the last month of the season was uh, it it kind of uh. I don't want to say it, it lowered the bar a little bit, but it definitely definitely brought me down. But uh, I I shook that all off before I went to nationals, and and I've always had the mantra like all year, no matter who I lost to, I had the mantra that I can beat anyone, and I'm going to going to be able to beat these these guys in big matches, and and that's that's what I came in into Cleveland with because I wanted to show out for for the, for the people around here and for my family, for my friends. One of the the main you know, I guess themes of the tournament was after 
uh, your your one win, and you know it's it was documented that you you took last year off. We'll talk a little bit about that in a minute, but you said you had unfinished business, and that kind of came the uh, you know buzzword. I mean, they even threw you got the shirts out there quickly made unfinished business, but <laughs> you, you're going to draw Preston Weigel, who again teched you in the first period a month ago. How do you make those type of match adjustments to go from you know Tariq Wilson did the same thing, another Ohio guy who was unseated. He got teched by Cade Brock in January and beat him later in the tournament. I mean. What what goes through the mind? How do you change something like that? Um, well, if I'm going to be honest with you, when I when I saw the bracket and I saw that I had the potential to wrestle in the second match, I was honestly happy because um, I was like, well, I, I always start my first match of a tournament out slow, so I get that I can get a match out of the way, and then immediately I'll wrestle him again, and wrestle him again, and have another chance against him. And that time I'll have my that'll be my second match. I'll get my second win, so I'll be I'll be much more prepared and. And when when you lose a, when I lost a match like that, like I came off the bat, I was teched, but at the same time, I I was thrown at the beginning and then just tilted, and I, I tilted a few times and just off the mat. And I was like, I didn't really get to show show what I could do against him, and and I think I can come back and and actually beat that kid. I told people, yeah, I can I can beat him, I can beat him, and whether they believed it or not, I didn't I didn't really care. Um, but uh. I was I was excited to have a rematch against him. So, <laughs> growing up an hour away from from Cleveland, uh, do you, do you think you have this type of performance? Say, if this is in St. Louis, or do you think it was something that was just you were just on fire? No matter where it was going to be, you you were going to have this type of tournament. Um, I mean, I want to say I I truly do want to say that anywhere I would, but I I can't lie when I when I when I say. The, the 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 crowd definitely was was a, a big big factor and and just the the support from them definitely pushed me and motivated me to to keep wrestling strong and 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 go and finish the tournament strong even after I I lost that tough one in the semis so um, I don't know if I would have wrestled so well anywhere else just the I think I think what I said I had the home field advantage just because it's an hour away from where I actually I'm from where I live so. It's it was awesome, you know. With with so many Ohio fans in there again, it, it seemed like the local community was rooting for you. And then then all of a sudden, you run into Colin Moore, who's okay. You know, your little run to the quarters is nice and cute, but okay. Now here we are. We got a championship to win. Can you just get out of the way? All right, you, you lock up. You you step and throw. You get the fall. Let's just the moment that happens. I mean. The opportunity to wrestle the one seed. I mean, were there nerves going in? I mean, what was what were you thinking going into that match? Um, I I was telling people I match up. I thought I matched up really well with him. Um, there's uh, one person uh, in my corner. have been telling me all year. They're like, I can't wait to see you wrestle Colin Colin Moore and then the, in, at nationals. I can't wait to see you beat him. And then when the brackets came out, he texted me immediately. He's like, I can't wait to see you beat Colin Moore in the quarterfinals and. And I, I truly believe that I could could do it, and and um, just going out there, and and I I held my own for the first the first thirty seconds, and and I was prepared for his offense, and and I didn't let him let him catch me with any of his barrel rolls or anything like that. Um, just just being able to do that, uh, knowing knowing that I, when I when I wrestle strong, that my defense is really well, and that if I keep a good keep a good defense, I can I can stay in any match, and that's what I did. So it was it was uh, it was pretty cool and and to see that actually happen was was awesome. Was it kind of intimidating to go in that situation knowing that that Ohio State was the whole state of Ohio, your home state was probably your all all Buckeye Nation was definitely rooting against you in this this position and you silenced them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, yeah, that honestly did get, the thought did go through my head, but at the same time. I've never been been one to uh, to be too uh, affected negatively by the crowd. I've 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 definitely had my fair share of of times where the the crowd definitely wasn't on my side. So so I'm not. It's it's not like I'm not used to it. So I mean, I was I was prepared for it, for anything, and uh, it it was honestly I was not expecting expecting the, the support I got, even even from some Ohio State fans who. He even came up to me and said, "Like, hey, you know, I'm an Ohio State fan, but that was still really awesome what you did." So they were they were really gracious about it. I didn't, I mean, I didn't receive any anything negative from any of them. So I was really really grateful for that. The experience in the semifinals out there in the dog bone center stage, ESPN. I mean, uh, 
the loss to Michael Machiavelli, who kind of ends up being kind of like a, a Cinderella in his own right, you know, being a one-time state champ from North Carolina. Uh, what happened in that match in your in your estimation? Um, I just wasn't. I I feel like my body just wasn't physically there. Um, I just felt like uh, off uh, off the bat, I felt really tired, and, and uh, uh, I just felt like I couldn't couldn't hit the moves I wanted to, and and I was really sluggish and and all that. Um, I think I think uh, most matches I wrestled that kid, I could beat him. So, uh, I mean, doesn't really matter now. But I was I was still uh, I'm I'm still happy the way things turned out. So I'm, I'm fine with it. You end up beating Jacob Holschlag of Northern Iowa, another wrestler who had beaten you through the course of the year. That went a little tighter than than what happened with uh, with with the falls. But ultimately, you got a chance to wrestle Colin Moore again. And when you come into that situation and people look at, okay, you pinned him. Were you out to prove that this wasn't a fluke, or were you out to just win a match and finish as high as you could? Um, I honestly, I was uh, I was a little banged up uh, uh, Friday night after the match, and I was feeling a little down, and my arm my arm was hurting a little bit. And then when I wrestled a uh, Holschlag, um, I know like our match was a really close one. And he's like he's like one of those kids who like he just he just stays in really good position. It's really hard to score on him. So. Uh, I was just I was kind of dreading that match a little bit, but then I ended up getting that fall. I was like, okay, that was that was good. I'm, I got I got some more momentum again, and and I'm ready to go, man. I'm just gonna I'm gonna beat him again, and and I knew that a, a little bit he would he would be uh, calling and be scared, like to 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 go to go up with me and this to keep such a a high pace he was keeping at the beginning of our our first match. So uh, I was really confident uh, going into the second one. By the time it by the time it came around, and I was re- relaxed, I wasn't nervous or anything like that. And I honestly would have been would have been happy and, and just just overjoyed with my my uh, performance overall. Either way, so I'm just I even happier that it, it ended up the way it, that it did. So kind of almost a vindication be like see it wasn't a fluke i told you i was yeah. gonna beat him and i can you know and, and then well how about how about just going straight up ground and pound with with the coaches in the corner afterwards man that was that was hilarious <laughs> yeah yeah I, got, I mean that kind of stuff happens with me in the hill in practice i'll beat him up a little bit you know I'll just joke just joke around it's nothing serious but uh yeah it's just it's just nice to be able to let loose with them and and celebrate and, and enjoy the accomplishments we've 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 had this season so a lot of people have thrown out that the the F word and that F word being fun when talking about <laughs> Penn State so much. You really looked like you were having fun. Of course, winning is fun; it's infectious. But you know, describe the, the what it what what where's the fun coming out of you? Just pinning on one day, like you, you're smiling, man. You you got the million dollar smile on television, big screen, the biggest freaking indoor screen you can find, I guess, in North America. But uh, I mean, that was like literally the biggest smile of the tournament. <laughs> um. Just yeah, I was. That was honestly the, the most fun I've ever had in a tournament in my life because um, it was just. I just, I just, not that I, not not saying I didn't care, but I wasn't stressed and I wasn't worried and I had nothing. I feel like I had no pressure, and I feel like that allowed me to let loose and just just go for it. And being able to do that just is it's 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 fun and all on itself and. And uh, to to do that and to win, th- that combination is is awesome. That's the tournament experience. Now, before we, you know, we, we've we've seen that. Now, going with your backstory, you were a state champ out of Ashtabula Lakeside, which, as you said, you're about an hour, I guess, northeast. If you go up Lake Erie, that's where you're at. So, it, it basically kind of the suburban sprawl of Cleveland. It, it's not an area that uh, wrestling fans are unfamiliar with because that is like the the heart of. Ohio wrestling is that northeast corridor there, that northeast Ohio region, Cleveland, Akron, all the way up there. But when when the opportunity comes to go to Kent State, you win a state championship. Uh, first of all, how was the recruiting like for you, and why was Kent State ultimately your choice? Um, for me, I uh, I committed before my senior year. I didn't want the, the pressure of trying to impress some coach uh, and a college coach uh, during the state finals to be be a thing that was over my head um the recruiting process was was for me was was pretty simple um i was recruited by a few schools uh like quite a few schools but there was only a couple of schools that are 
I was interested in, and, and I narrowed that list down pretty pretty uh, easily by going on. I went I went on two visits. Uh, I went uh, to University of Penn and here, and um, when after the experiences with my visits, I, I decided that that this was the place for me, and the, and the people were genuine, and, and whether I was wrestling or not, I wanted to be here. Yeah, for for those who are unaware, you, your your career goals and aspirations don't necessarily center around the sport of wrestling. They center around game designing and game development. Uh, when, when did that interest <laughs> really kind of jump into your mind? Um, that has been in my mind ever since I was probably four years old. <laughs> no joke. I used to just try to create video games. I put <laughs> one time when I was a little kid, I put a I made like a little CD-ROM out of the piece of paper and wrote like Mario Party 3 on it or something and tried to put it <laughs> in my computer. Wow, you had Mario was, Party on that one. Wow. Think, think, thinking it was going to work. <laughs> so, um, and when I was a little kid, I would I would say, oh, I want to cr- make video games. And, and then as I got older, I was like, ah, yeah, I'd be like super genius to do something like that. And and um, I, th- then when I, once I got to college, I changed my major a few times, and then I realized I'm like, this is what I want to do. This is I don't want to look back and and take the take the easy road out, do something that that is um, a little easier, but it's not my passion. So um, computers and technology and all that, programming, whatever, video games, all that's all my passion, and um, I I I really enjoy that stuff. So. <laughs> And it's not like it's it's scoffed at anymore. I mean, look at what esports is 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 happening. I mean, there are colleges that are saying, "All right, we're gonna we're gonna do this esports thing." Granted, they're not putting them under their athletic departments, but uh, you know, you're seeing them on TV. These giant stadiums for the fighting games and things of that nature. So it's 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 a billion dollar industry, and it's no longer like okay, you know, you've got this the stud athlete that wants to be a game developer, not the the skinny kid who sits in the corner by himself. You know, it's like it breaks yeah. all the stereotypes. I mean, yeah, what, what, that's, what, that's is, fun. Sorry. What's the most surprising thing people, you know, give you in response to say, yeah, I want to be a game developer? Um, nowadays, um, I, I don't know. Before I used to be kind of embarrassed to say it to people, but I'm, I'm pretty outright with it now. And people are like, oh, okay. And I'm like, if I mean, if it doesn't work out for me, it can always be a hobby for me, and I can always I I'm in computer science, so I can I mean jobs are are at like uh there people aren't graduating fast enough to fill these jobs at this point. So if I uh, if I ever needed a fallback, I can I can find a job pretty easily. But uh, going back to the the esports thing you said, I uh, in my hotel room. I was uh, there. I was watching. I was actually watching some of that some of that stuff. Some on YouTube, like esports, like pre-recorded, like world championships, on there, <laughs> in between like sessions and all that. So, <laughs> well, I was at the NAIA two weeks previously, and there was like this big thing in Des Moines going on, and like you know, like the Grandview president was like, "Yeah, I'm on one of those esports thing." I'm like, "What? What?" <laughs> it was just, I mean, I'm not. I play a lot. I played a lot of video games growing up. I let's let's talk video games here for a minute. So, uh, how old are you right now? What are you about? Twenty two, twenty three? Thereabouts. Twenty two. Twenty two. So. If you said you were four 18 years ago, that would put it 2000. Oh, man, you're making me feel old. So I'm thinking 2000, we were probably playing PlayStation 2 and uh, N64, NFL Blitz. So what was what were some of your favorite games when you first started getting into it? So when I first started playing games, I was playing the Nintendo Entertainment System, Super Nintendo, and the N64, and, and then the GameCube and everything up from that. But um, as a little kid, my brother and I, we, we would play... Uh, we play Super Mario World, that, that the one on the Super Nintendo a uh, ton. I mean, I've beat that game quite a few times, and I'll still, I'll, we'll still pick it up every now and then, especially since that new like the Super Nintendo Classic and the Nintendo Classic came out. When I got the when I got the last one, my brother and I sat down for a few hours and started playing playing Super Mario World. So, <laughs> that's, yeah, I mean, it, it's a little nostalgic, and and um, it was it was I love it. It's it's like a relaxation thing for me and. And, um, it's a, I love it. <laughs> yeah. For me growing up, had those, like I was always a kid that had the game system after the other game system had come out. It was like, I had the Atari 2600 when everybody's got the NES. And then I finally get a Nintendo. Everybody's already got the super Nintendo. And it's like, I was always a system behind or two because, you know, 
uh, you know. Yeah, you know. that was stuff was expensive. When I came out. <laughs> yeah, middle class family, man. We're not. We're not, fifty bucks for a game. I remember Paperboy was like the most expensive game. And I'm like, no, because <laughs> the putt putt had the arcade with the handlebars. We always want to play mm-hmm. Paperboy, but uh, it's funny because you mentioned the classic. Uh, I was in. I was at home in Virginia a couple years ago when it came out. I was like, oh, I want to see if we can get. It. I called every place. I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'm not getting my hands on an NES classic. So what do I do? I raspberry pie the heck out of that one, man. So I, I, my wife and I, she, we're we're embroiled in like a a year long battle of Doctor Mario right now, and oh uh, she was crushing me until we bumped up the speed to fast. Now I can hold my own. I'm actually winning the series, but. <laughs> Yeah, so just thinking about like those old school games and and what games are now yeah. because I don't think I've had an updated system since since a PS2. So uh, actually, yeah, I don't even yeah I haven't played a video game like on a console in a while. Uh, when it comes to consoles, what type of things are, are you are you a, are you an Xbox guy? Are you a P- PS4 guy? What's your what's your console? Of I got it all. <laughs> of course you do. Yeah, I have the Xbox, PS4, that's the, the Switch, the Wii U, and I, I I have a gaming computer that I built. I, I that's where I play most of my games. I have a game computer with a ton of games on Steam. <laughs> so yeah, because Ty Wall is actually the coach at uh, assistant coach Virginia Tech, another Ohio guy. He's he's got this giant gaming computer with like the clear casing and the neon mm-hmm. light in it. So uh, that's, <laughs> yeah, we're friends on Steam. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> so uh, what 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 wrestlers have you played uh, games against up on uh, in, in the wonderful world of video gaming? Because I know this is um, I, I don't know much about this world. I haven't really played. Well, I haven't really played much with anyone who wasn't really my teammate. I used to play some games with Ian Miller and uh, Mike DePalma and uh, Mac McGuire. I used to play a lot with them. Um, but, I mean, guys on other teams, I don't think I've, I've played much with them. Yeah, you're only sitting there talking trash on the uh, – <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be – I feel like so old right now because I used to love video <laughs> games. I love video games. It's just there's a point where when you're in your 30s, it's just kind of like, all right, I got – Work, wrestling, and fam. I got kids, man. I can't. So the Doctor Mario is about all I get. But mm-hmm. um, so all the Super Mario World that is there. That was like a tradition. We'd go up to my my wife's house or her in laws, and they still had the the Super Nintendo. So we would always beat Super Mario World on Christmas. That was kind of like our goal. That one level though, with like the uh, uh, which donut bridge was it? Uh, with the with the saws that come across, you have to take the high one or low oh. one. I could never figure out which one I wanted to take. <laughs> Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, we're talking video. We're talking Super Mario World here in short time. That, this is real, people. This is real. <laughs> so when we we circle back to the wrestling world, last year you you took not completely the year off. You wrestled one tournament. You wrestled up at heavyweight. Your actual win was against a Division two national champion or national uh, finalist, Cameron Teacher from Notre Dame. But uh, what what pulled you off the mat last year? Um, it was a combination. It was a combination of issues um i had a i mean i have in my lower back i have a bro- broken vertebrae um and it it's just like it's one of those things the pain comes and goes and and me going up to heavyweight last year definitely didn't help adding all that weight and i like mentally i wasn't into it and uh i had a lot of things going on in my life where where um wrestling was definitely the last thing uh that i wanted to worry about and and I think I felt a little bit of pressure uh, after all those guys graduated, and I was the next guy up to, to you know, all American or whatever because we had the streak going, and and um, yeah, it was a uh, it was a ton of things, and and I just wasn't in the right place mentally, and um, I had a lot of things to work through. Is the pressure of stepping away in a situ- in a sport like wrestling, where if this were basketball or football, it'd be, it'd be huge news. Uh, wrestling, we see a lot of kids walk away for various different reasons. When you stepped away, did you ever think you were going to come back? Um, no, not at all. Uh, there was a point where I was like, I'm done. I'm moving on with my life and this will never happen. Like I will never step on wrestling that again. I don't, I like, I wasn't watching wrestling. Like I had no idea what happened in NCAAs last year up until like a month or two ago, a couple months. Um, yeah, it was just, it was like, I, I wanted no part of it. And I couldn't, I, I didn't really like going home to my hometown and seeing people because, because when I was in high school, um, they remember me or, or they saw me in college and say like, Hey, how's wrestling going? Cause some people knew, some people didn't know that I was done and I hated exp- trying to explain myself. 
And um, it was just like, uh, it was just like the more and more I thought about it, the more and more I wanted to be away from it. So um, didn't just, it just changed one day. <laughs> I mean, it is an unforgiving sport. You talked about your back injury. It, it's some of these things where, you know, you put, uh, what did you start for wrestling? First of all, uh, seventh grade. Okay. So you, you're not like a, a fifth grade, you know, a five-year-old starting in it. I mean, you, you, you'd been in it long enough to, to appreciate. It. You'd also been in it long enough to know how much of a grind it is, but when what, what's that discussion like when when you have to walk away with Coach Andersey and, and the staff who it seems like you've you've got a great relationship with now? I mean, what was it like then? And and you know how, how does that type of conversation happen? Um, I think it was it was pretty emotional for for everyone. Um, they they wanted to see me just. I mean, they wanted to see me uh, be successful in anything I did, and uh, they were they were pretty supportive of it, and and I think they 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 just like hey let's just we'll just lay off of you for a while and, and we'll let you be do your own thing and, and then we'll see what happens and 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 i was like okay uh i don't know what you're expecting i'm not coming back and the decision to come back was was that something that you made yourself uh, like you said one day you just woke up and what was that first conversation like when you call the coach and be like hey i think i want to do this again <laughs> so it, <laughs> I actually, um, so this one day I was playing, I started, uh, I gained a lot of weight. I got up to like, like 250, 255. And, um, that's a comfortable I weight. That's I, where I'm at right now. It's nothing wrong yeah. with that, but uh, I'd like, to, <laughs> I'd like the way which you weigh right now. Let's be honest. <laughs> so I, I started working out like, uh, I was just playing basketball. Um, I didn't step in a weight room or anything. I, I didn't lift weights or anything. Um, I started playing basketball with my brother. And we'd go every day, you know, at a park. And um, this one day, he was like, "Hey, me and my buddies are going to this uh, this MMA practice. Uh, you want to come?" And the first set, the first class is free. And I'm like, "Uh, no." And then I then I, I I call him back. I'm like, "You know, what? I'll go." So get up, load up in the car, we go. And there's not too many people in there. And uh, the guy who's running it. We start. I start wrestling around and stuff, and and we're doing like some some kickboxing or whatever. And then he comes up to me and he's like, "Hey, um, did you used to wrestle?" And I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "Who wrestled for Kent State?" He said, like, "Oh, oh, you wrestled for Kent State? I know you." He's like, "You wrestled in?" Uh, he's like, "I watched you on ESPN last year." And I'm like, "Oh, uh, uh, yeah, okay." And and then he was like, "Man," like he just started raving about me and and all that and. And I was like, as I was wrestling around and all that stuff, I was like, man, this is fun. Like, like I want to go back in, in, in the room and, and wrestle with some guys. And at the time, they were doing uh, club practice here at the, like the Golden Pride Wrestling Club. So then I'm like, I text Coach Hill. And I'm like, hey, I'm coming to practice tomorrow. And mind you, we hadn't talked in months. We hadn't said a word to each other. And um, he was like, he's like, okay, cool. You know, he was all, he was all pumped. So I show up. And then I had to like, I had to go on my phone and buy a little USA wrestling card real quick before I could step on. So uh, then I start practicing and I'm like, I like this. And I just kept coming every day. And, and then I, like, I think like two or three weeks later, I'm like, uh, Hey, I think I want to uh, start moving forward with, uh, with coming back. Cause they were real standoffish about it. They, they, were, they weren't pressuring me or anything. They were just like, Hey, just come. You can have fun. Like there's no pressure about it. So, um, so I just um, so I asked them what I needed to do, and they were they were really accepting of it, and they were excited to have me back, and went through all like the red tape and all that, and and uh, finally, um, I got back and I was back into practice, and it took me a little bit to get adjusted to it and lose the rest of that weight, but um, but here I am, so <laughs> I'm happy. <coughs> Talk about the adjustment period. What was the expectation like when you came back? I mean, I believe that the coaching staff's going to say, okay, an undefeated Ohio State champion, this guy should probably be an All-American contender at some point in his career. But what was the expectations for you just to get get your feet back into it and, you know, start feeling like you can wrestle again? Or, you know, was the podium a a legitimate goal for the season? Um, uh, they, There was no expectation at all. It was just... Um, they just wanted me, they were like, we just want you to just come out and do your best basically. Um, 
they didn't say like, hey, we want you to all American, we want you to um, win win the MAC. We don't like they didn't say any of that. They just said we want to make sure you peak at the right time and finish the year strong. That's that's pretty much what it was, and and they made sure I did that. I, I didn't compete most of the matches in the first semester, uh, most of the varsity stuff. So, um, yeah, that was. I mean, it was it was nice getting my feet feet under me before I started competing with some with some guys. Um, but they were, yeah, they were really awesome, and and uh, they made they they made sure that uh, I kept my head up throughout it because. To be honest, there were some practices this year. The beginning of the year, I just broke down, start crying. I'm like, man, why did I come back? Uh, I'm just not. It's, uh, it's just not for me. Like I'm not, not. No, I didn't say it's not for me. I just meant like uh, maybe, maybe I'm just not not the same as I used to be. You know, I has have self doubt and all that. And they were just like, keep your head up. It's gonna come. You're gonna do well. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna finish strong. And and they haven't stopped that even even with my poor performances or or bad losses this year they've they've pushed me to keep my head up when when i didn't want to at some time in hindsight does it make you realize that you did make the right choice in going to kent state regardless of whether it was wrestling yeah um when when i did end up leaving um jimmy uh head coach uh he he was like hey um if you want like if you want to go transfer somewhere else let me know and I'm like, no, if I, if I'm, if I'm going to be done, I'm just going to stay here. I like this university. And if I come back, I mean, I would, I mean, if I ever were to come back, I would wrestle here. Like there's nowhere else I would want to wrestle. Uh, it was just, it was wrestling. It wasn't this place. This place is awesome. So. Yeah. I've been around campus there. I've been, been uh, there in Akron, a couple places, universities, and of course, uh, various campuses throughout the country. One thing about that part of the country I also like is, uh, especially in Akron, is Swenson's. You got a, <laughs> you got a, you got your favorite Swenson's combo. Um, yeah, I get like the what is it the double quarter pounder or whatever. Like it's like the two the double stack burger and just like a fry and like a chocolate milkshake. I just go I straight. Live right, I live right by a Swenson's. <laughs> like I live like I live like a mile away. Yeah, so that must must have been tough. Like when you keep coming down to waves, like ah, oh, no galley boys today. That's like yeah. I get. Uh, Harry Lester told me about it the first time, and we went like <laughs> it must have been like twelve years ago. It was like two galley boys and a shake. I didn't even bother with the fries. I just wanted the galley boys because they were that good. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. How, how soon have you had a galley boy since nationals, or have you had a, been to Swenson since nationals? Um, no, I had I had Swenson's right after Max though. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, I had my, I got like a galley boy and and that double, that double stack burger I was telling you about whatever it's called. <laughs> as as we move forward, you've got another year, and you you said that you know unfinished business. When you finishing third now, that's 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 a great accomplishment. There's so many people that don't get that opportunity. Uh, there's only ten a year that get that opportunity to win with your hand being raised and to do it against a one seed who you'd you know you'd pinned and then beaten twice. A guy who won a junior world medal. You know, guys had uh, a really, really good year. When, what is what is going to be finished business for you? Um, I mean, in terms of this year, I've done it. Um, I'm American, and I did better than than I thought I could. Um, at at times, um, like I told you, I think I could beat anyone. But there are times where I'm like, ah, man, this is rough. If I can't beat this kid, I'm going to beat this kid. You know, but uh, for next year. My unfinished business is definitely winning a national title. I b- truly believe I can, and I just gotta do the work, put the work in this summer and uh, next fall to to actually uh, achieve that. Of course, you know that you're no longer gonna be the uh, you're not the <laughs> underdog anymore, dude. You know that, yeah. right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> How are you gonna handle that? Because uh, that that's a, that's a whole other another set of uh, circumstances that comes with when you're returning all American. People expect you to wrestle like an all American every time out. You're gonna get their best every single time. Yeah. Um, it's definitely gonna be tougher. Um, some guys are gonna come after me, there's gonna be a target on my back and all that. Um I mean, the high school is uh was isn't anywhere where near near this, but uh I definitely going from uh my junior year of high school I was second in the state and the guy who beat me graduated and then going into senior year I was the guy to beat. And so I kind of did have that target on my back then, and and uh, at times I didn't have the 
the people on my side. So um, I kind of know what it feels like. It's not not as big as a stage as uh, Division One college wrestling, but I, I think I, I think I should be able to handle it. Who was the favorite match? What was your favorite match that you've had in college? Like whether win, whether you won or lost, let's take the tournament out of it because we know the answer to that part of the question. But if there's an opponent you've you've liked to scrap with over the last couple of years and you feel that you've had the best matches with, who would that have been? Um, one of my uh, favorite opponents was probably uh, Phil Longton. Uh, I've wrestled him what like three three times my sophomore redshirt freshman year. The first time I wrestled him, we went to like four overtimes, and he beat me. He, I broke my nose that match, and um, <laughs> that was that was a uh, rough. I had a roasting session from that when I, when my face swelled up <laughs> the next day. Um, and then I I wrestled him, pinned him at uh in at uh in at Ohio, and then he beat me. He beat me at Max, which was it was a pretty good match, and I kind of fell short, but uh. I mean, he's a great competitor, and he's a he's a really great guy. Uh, we wrestled a couple of times actually up here at Kent. He 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 does like construction now, and uh, like he's I think he's like some kind of engineer for that. And and uh, so he he was working up at Kent for a while doing some construction. So he would come up in here and wrestle with me a little bit. And he's also a pretty avid skateboarder too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked about that. He's so, yeah. <laughs> there was I, I remember reading an article article about that about him being a big skateboarder. All right, we've got the wrestling, we've got the expectations. Let's turn this thing back to what you like talking about, video games and game development. I actually went through and I, I searched out some of the, the, the game, early games that you've got out there. And first of all, just ducking cross. That one is like crossy road on like at, at a very basic level, but it's still annoying as all get out. Uh, when, when you, and the other one's Dreamscape. I haven't played that one yet. But when, when you're developing it, you put these things out there. Is this more or less just a test your skills and like certain things because the, the 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 duck game is you know it's it's very blocky it's it seems like you're getting an idea across before you really fully implement graphics and things of that nature i mean what's that process like in building a game from scratch um for me it's all it's all, all the g- games that i'm creating now <coughs> are learning experiences when i when i go through and and do something like that i learn a ton because i'm just doing something kind of like head first and then as I hit an obstacle, I have to research and figure out what I need to do to, to overcome it. And um, with that game, I actually learned a lot. I created that in, in like a day or two, I think, um, that, that, that just ducking cross. Um, the Dreamscape was actually, uh, I created that with a friend, a couple of friends. And um, that was for like a game jam. Well, both of them were for game jams, which, which are like little competitions or like... Uh, something it's like they give you a certain amount of time with uh certain uh certain like qualifications you need to meet to like when you create your game like expectations and then like a like a theme or something like that and you create a game based on what they tell you and uh for that um i created i created those games and and i i have a ton ton more projects that i i haven't released or anything like that that i've done for like school or or just myself for fun and i have a few more that I'm that I'm working on. I, I actually wanted to create. Um, I was actually talking to my coach Hill. Um, it was like the beginning of the season. I was running. I was running the clock, like the score clock, for one of our matches. And there was this there was this app he was using, and he paid a paid a good amount of money for. It. I can't remember what it's called, but it was it was very counterintuitive. Which is like, it's just like like a normal person shouldn't be able to. I shouldn't be able to use it. Like they, it's it's really hard for them to learn how to use it. Kind of like Snapchat. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of like the new update on that. The UI on Snapchat's um, horrible. I'm too old yeah. for that too. So I um I I was thinking about creating just like a little like wrestling timer app that like keeps track of like uh like the score, the riding time, and the time, all that. But like a little bit more like in, intuitive that like you could just say like oh he took him down, so then it automatically starts riding time or something like that. I was thinking about doing something like that and just like releasing it for you like on phones. Because I think it would be like a really good good app for like 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 wrestling camps or something where like a like a camp counselor could like have it on their phone and, and keep track of the score and all that. Because whenever we do camps, we'll have somebody holding the phone, somebody somebody uh, keeping score, and then like a ref or something when like you could keep score and and time at the same time. Even though that's a little tough, but 
<coughs> just makes things a little bit easier. Yeah, because I, I'm curious on how the this this build works. So, for example, when I when I develop a podcast, I'm using uh, Adobe Audition. When I'm doing a layout for a preview guide, I'm using InDesign. Uh, those who are using a lot of graphic arts are using like Adobe After Effects and things like that. What do you what do you build a video game with? Um, there are like a a lot of different uh, game engines you can use for it. Um, I prefer like right now I prefer Unity. It's pretty simple to use, and there's a ton of like documentation and information online where like if I get stuck on something or I can't figure something out, I can look it up on like YouTube or something like that. Is that all open um, source stuff? Uh, yeah, yeah. Like Unity is like it's like free. It's pretty much free. Um, anyone can use it. So all you need is a computer that. It's good enough to run it and and uh, like uh, just enough space in your hard drive, I guess, to hold it. <laughs> is it is a lot more of it uh, when you build a graphical <laughs> interface, or is it uh, a lot of code? Um, I guess it de- depends on what you're doing. Um, is, I mean, probably regardless, there's going to be a, a good amount of code. Like I do a lot of my projects, I do a lot of coding. Um, but it's it's not crazy advanced or anything like that. I, um. I don't I don't do too many graphics. Um one guy one guy I know he does he does like he's like an artist and he he did some some art for like the Dreamscape game. I don't really handle that. I'll handle like animations and stuff like that. Okay, so you know, it's basically like when you when you're creating a movie, you got the director, the producer, then you got the sound design. You it basically being a game devi- developer and designer there's is is one key component to the finished product and you get like I guess the finishing, that's how that works. Yeah, yeah, there's a ton of people behind the scenes. Um just just me working on like a little game that probably like 10 people are going to play like makes me realize how hard it is and and sometimes I'll see online like people get really harsh with like game developers and stuff and I'm like if you understood if you understood how hard it actually is to do something like that like you would realize like how how like unreasonable you're being but uh, that's just me. Yeah, dude, if you piss off gamers just duck and cover, they will Warm, <laughs> eat like, you up. There is some, yeah. I mean, I what was it that I don't even want to go down the road of the whole GamerGate situation, but like that type. It's just there's that, then the, uh, things that are jumping out at me, like uh, you know the the esports versus is it a you know the whole that that thing. yeah. But I do want to. <laughs> the one thing I think for for most of us who are uh, of of a certain age that like video games but d- know nothing about the the back end of it, I just think of the movie Grandma's Boy. And I don't know if you've seen it or not, but it's it's quite hilarious. But, uh, you know, they're designing games and I'm just like, this is uh, I have no idea what's going on. And then, of course, the the South Park episodes where they're just making fun of the World of Warcraft, which I thought were my buddies played <laughs> I, Warcraft I so much. <laughs> they played Warcraft so much. They're like, oh, my gosh, it is down to the wire, like perfect. It was it was crazy. What, what, are, you, <laughs> what, are, what are your thoughts on that there? <laughs> um, Yeah, <laughs> that. That was actually I remember watching that that uh that South Park World of Warcraft episode. That that was hilarious. Uh, <laughs> For those um, who don't know how true to life do you think that stuff was? I mean, I I I think it's 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 pretty true to life. There obviously there's a little bit of uh um hyperbole with that, but uh <laughs> it, yeah. Uh it's pre- it's pretty satirical, so so it definitely definitely makes fun of some of those some of those people. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, one of one of the guys I know, one one of the guys I went to high school with works for Blizzard, so it's always a conversation. We bring it up every now and then. That's it's cool. Like, yeah. So but uh Kyle Cannell finishing things up here. He's a junior at Kent State, got another year to go, another year to go. He's had his unfinished business settled this year as he finishes third at the NCAA wrestling championships at 197 pounds. Uh follow him on Twitter at okay, Kyjor R L. That's uh K Y J O R Capital R L. You're gonna have to explain to me the the uh the genesis of this this name here okay so uh i i changed it changed it last year i got have you heard of rocket league absolutely not <laughs> okay it, it, okay so it's a it's a it's, a, it's like a, a soccer game but with cars you might have seen like videos or something like pop up but uh it's like a soccer game with cars and i got i got pretty good at it last year i ended up getting like the like the highest rank it was like champion and which is like it was pretty tough i was playing that game a lot <laughs> and uh um i don't know i just got i got pretty obsessed with it so i changed my name to that and kaijor is actually um a name i came up with when i was a little kid when i first got into like uh, like games and stuff um online so what so do they I, call I, that a gamer I, tag is that what they call it 
I yeah again yeah, I don't know like man the, I don't know the gaming world man I'm I, you're obviously I'm showing my ignorance here I know just yeah, enough to like, sound stupid <laughs> no you're fine, you're fine. <laughs> Okay, and also at Instagram, Snapchat, at Kyle Canal. You know, are, are you on Twitch? I mean, where can people find you that are gamers that say, hey, I yeah, want, I want on, to play some I'm games? I'm on Twitch. Uh, it's, um, it's, it's just Kyjor, K-Y-J-O-R. Um, and I'm on Steam at, at Kyjor and, and Xbox at Kyjor. PS4 is uh, K-Canel95, so K-C-O-N-E-L-95. Um, yeah, uh, and yeah, I'll play with people. Um, if anyone wants to play with me, let me know. Right now, it's, I'm a little bit busy. I'm going through a lot of stuff, catch up on some schoolwork. So it might be like a like a, a week or two before I really get back into into gaming. So, last question I want to ask, and this might fall under the gaming realm. I think it's a little bit more. What were your thoughts on Spencer Lee coming out to the the Pokemon theme? Oh my gosh, I was freaking out. That was awesome. That was the that was the, the greatest moment of the freaking tournament. Did you know that he was? was a, did you know he was a super nerd just like you? No, I, I had no idea. But that's awesome because <laughs> it ma- it made like the Nintendo magazine like website. It's like Nintendo Life or something. It's like wrestler yeah, comes out that. to Pokemon theme. Yeah, I saw that. I have like uh, in my. Well, I'm a big like uh, Zelda fan, so I uh, I have um like like probably like ten posters in my room hung up of like like zelda and all that and i have like these zelda socks that i'll wear to practice sometimes any wrestling posters <laughs> next to uh next to link <laughs> um see i know link yeah, i, don't I know link so. <laughs> i watched my roommates play a lot of ocarina in time when i was on the on the n64 like 1997 98 so <laughs> yeah a lot of link <laughs> a lot of link yeah so dave schultz on the wall link it just <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, Kyle Cannell has been very engaging. It was fun to watch you compete in Cleveland. Best of luck to you. And if again, if they want to follow you at Kaijor RL on Twitter, at Kyle Cannell on Snapgram, uh, Insta Face and Snapgram. No, at uh, Instagram and Snapchat. Uh, and best of luck to you uh, down the line, man. It was again fun to watch you wrestle. Thank you so much. The Short Time Wrestling Podcast is proudly outfitted by Compound Clothing. Shirts, singlets, custom gear orders, everything you need. Call up Cliff and the crew at cmpteamwear.com. First time listening? Well, you can change that by going to matttalkonline.com slash get short time to subscribe on Apple Podcasts or listen on your favorite podcatcher at matttalkonline.com slash listen. This show is part of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, head over to matttalkonline.com.